from Alice Scraps Wonderland here and I'm getting ready to use this Zella Teal line from Prima to make some pretty paper pleats. I'm going to start by cutting a one and three quarter inch strip. I would suggest cutting at least an inch and a half width um, just to make sure you have plenty of room for sewing. So I'm going to do this twice because I'm going to show you two different types of pleats. Next you'll want to get out your scoring board and a scoring tool to mark your pleats up with. I'm going to start out with a box pleat and I'm going to score at the half inch mark and then I'm going to go over one quarter inch and then another half inch and then a quarter inch and then three quarters of an inch and then a quarter inch. And I'm gonna keep going like that, a quarter, half, three quarter, a quarter, one half, um, all the way down my paper until I run out of paper. So you'll fold this box pleat so that the half inch sections are raised and you'll be using those quarter inch sections to create the, the texture, the dimension. The next pleat that I'm going to show you is the basic pleat and you're going to start by scoring at the half inch mark and then go over a quarter inch from that and again a half inch, quarter inch, half inch, going back and forth between those markings and then go all the way down the paper. So again, you'll be using those quarter inch sections to create that dimension so that the half inch section becomes that main part of the pleat that you'll see. So it's an over and then back. You may end up with a little section at the end that you can either use to glue down another section or strip so that you can get longer pleats or if that's all you need, you can just snip off that extra edge. I'm just using my Tim Holtz snips. And it's always fun to add a little distress ink or chalk ink to the edges just to give it a little bit more dimension. Just ink up all of the different edges, the sides, and then I'll be doing the creases of the pleats as well. And again, I'm doing the same with the other pleat as well, just making sure that it's pleated the way I want it as I'm inking it. Next, I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers Stitch Happy Sewing Machine. I love this machine because it's made for sewing on paper and you can clean the little paper piercing pieces out from underneath the machine with your vacuum cleaner. I'm just uh, lining it up in the center for the box pleat. Sorry, that light's a little bright for my camera. Um, and as you uh, sew this together, just kind of stop, stick your pleats together the way they should go, and then feed it through the machine. And just keep doing that until you get all the way down your strip. So here you can see what that box pleat looks like and that great dimension that it gives you. And here I am doing it with the other type of pleat. This time I'm going to sew near one of the edges. And again, just get a little bit of it pleated, get it into your machine, advance your needle, and start to sew, and then stop and pleat more as you need to. 
This is a really easy process to do with this machine, but you can certainly do it by hand with the paper piercer and sewing by hand. It takes a lot longer, but I think the dimension that you get is well worth the time. So here's what those finished pleats look like side by side so you can see the difference. I just love using that excess thread on the edges in my projects to give it some more dimension and texture. So you can really see that those pleats just give you a lot of dimension up off your page or your project. These are perfect for scrapbooking layouts, cards, mixed media projects, whatever you want to use it for. And don't worry about the very end where you think the thread might be coming loose. You can always cover that with a pretty jewel or enamel dot. And then also put some tape or glue right along the back of the stitching to glue it down to your project. And that will hold everything in place. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And here's a project that I made with one of these pleats.